The NBA has LeBron James, while the NFL has Tom Brady. And for rodeo fans, that legendary status belongs to none other than Lane Frost, an American professional rodeo cowboy. But in 1989, at the tender age of 25, Frost would suffer a tragic accident, which wouldn't change his life, but also revolutionize the structure of professional bull riding. What really happened to Frost? And how did a promising rodeo star suddenly disappear? Frost knew that he wanted to be a bull rider way before he even learned how to string words together. He was born to a rodeo family in Colorado in 1963, and he spent his earliest years riding any young calf he could find. But despite being born into a rodeo family, his mother didn't exactly want him to become a bull rider. In fact, she said she hoped that he would grow out of it, but when he got on a bull for the first time at nine years old, she knew they were never going to be separated. Fortunately for his family, he met a certain man named Don Gay, who was able to convince Frost to wait a few years before he rode a bull. And by the time Frost was 15, he began to ride bulls on a regular basis. Even though Frost didn't ride bulls regularly till he was 15, he won his first rodeo awards when he was 10, and it was at the Little Buckaroos Rodeos in Utah. In that competition, he won first place in bareback, second place in calf roping, and third place in the calf riding event. Bull riding wasn't the only thing Frost did that had his mother worried. He was also a very good wrestler. Fighting at about 75 pounds, he competed in 51 matches, won 45, lost four, and had two tied matches. Frost's family stayed in Utah, and this allowed him to participate in several youth rodeos. When the family finally moved in 1978 to Oklahoma due to the harsh Utah winters, Frost finally got his big break in rodeo. In the same year, he became the bull riding champion of the Small Fry Rodeo Association. Barely two years later, while in his sophomore year in high school, he became the bull riding champion of the Oklahoma Youth Rodeo Association and came in second place at the National High School Rodeo Association. But there was something different about these wins in 1980. It was also the year Frost would meet Kelly Kyle and Tuff Hedeman, two people who would change his life. The next year in 1981, Lane Frost won the bull riding championship that happened in Wyoming and once again got the bull riding championship from the Oklahoma Youth Rodeo Association. After Frost graduated from high school in 1982, the entire rodeo world knew that he was destined for the top. Just his first year out of high school, he became the bull riding champion of the American Junior Rodeo Association. He also became the first winner of the Youth National Finals. Lane Frost was an incredible kid with great talent, so it wasn't surprising that he got a number of rodeo scholarships, but he said no to every single one of them, choosing to play as a professional bull rider. In 1983, when he was 19, he became a full member of the PRCA, the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. Even though Frost had the talent to be in the National Finals Rodeo, he missed by a slight mark. To qualify for these finals, you had to be one of the 15 top finishers, and since Frost ranked as 16th, he couldn't be in the competition. He couldn't be named Rookie of the Year because of this, so he was named the runner-up. He ended up competing at the Super Bowl competition in Texas but only managed to go home with a tough luck award, an award for those who put in the work, but just couldn't get it right. His eventual win came at the PRCA Prairie Circuit Bull, where he emerged as the bull riding champion. The next year, Frost qualified for the national finals, and he would qualify for the next five years. From this point on, Frost would move so fast up the rodeo ladder that we have to wonder how he packed so much into such little time. In 1985, he became the champion at the Super Bowl event and was one of the 136 rodeo participants who competed in Winston Tour Rodeo. The same year, Frost came in third in world standings, where he rode eight out of ten bulls. And one of the bulls which evaded him was named Red Rock. Remember Kelly Kyle and Tuff Hedeman? This is the point where they become important. In 1986, Lane came in second place at the Winston Tour before becoming co-champions with his friend, Tuff Hedeman at the Super Bowl event. Lane was so enthusiastic about winning that he once rode with a bruised arm at the Cheyenne Frontier Days. But something way more interesting happened that year. Like the previous year, Frost reached the 1986 National Finals, and he successfully rode nine out of 10 bulls. If that had happened, he would have easily won the world championship and become the first bull rider to do that in the history of the sport.
Interestingly, the one buck which Frost couldn't ride turned out to be Red Rock, the same one he couldn't conquer the previous year. Unfortunately for Frost, his friend Tough Hedeman won the finals that year, while Frost was the NFR average winner. In 1987, Frost finally achieved the moment he had been waiting for his entire life. He became the world champion bull rider in December 1987, after successfully riding eight out of 10 bulls. This win was major for several reasons, but most importantly, how he had a broken collarbone earlier in the year. The injury healed, but got worse a few weeks before the finals. However, Frost wasn't willing to risk his chances of winning a world championship. Despite achieving his greatest dream, Lane wasn't going to slow down. The next year, he won bronze at the only rodeo event at the Olympics, and was also a huge part of the US team that won gold. Later that year, Frost decided he was going to conquer Red Rock once and for all, so he organized a competition between the both of them. Frost, of course, rode Red Rock for some time, but he was never able to stay on the bull for the final eight seconds it requires to win a world championship. Right after this competition, Red Rock was retired. The next year was very different for Frost. He felt like he had lost his focus, so he decided to organize a bull event in Guthrie, Oklahoma, named the Bull Mania a tribute to Freckles Brown. Frost had turned into a local celebrity, so the venue for the event was packed to the brim. Before the event, Frost had announced that he wanted to create a body called the Professional Bull Riders, and it would include members like Tough Hedeman and other players. The event began like every other one, the cheers drowning out the chants and antics of the bull rider. Frost wore the number two and rode bulls like the talented rider that he was. In fact, at the end of one of his rides, he somersaulted right over the tail of a bull. On the 30th of July, 1989, four days deep into the bull riding event, Frost rode a bull called Taking Care of Business. Now, the ride wasn't bad. As a matter of fact, it was a really good one from Frost. But as soon as he was done and off the bull, something interesting happened. The bull turned back and charged for Frost. When the champion landed in the dirt, the bull then used its horn to strike Frost in the back. But Frost wasn't going to go down like that. With the last bit of strength in him, he got up, all bloodied, and waved his hands for help. Frost suffered from broken ribs and severed his artery before finally suffering a cardiac arrest. Even though the young champion would be rushed to the hospital, it was only a matter of minutes before he was pronounced dead. It was supposed to be a performance that heralded a start of greatness, but it was one that would turn into his memorial, becoming Bullmania, a tribute to Freckles Brown and Lane Frost. Frost was an American sweetheart before his tragic death at 25. 3,500 people attended his funeral at the First Baptist Church, Oklahoma, but despite suffering a tragic death, Frost's legacy shaped bull riding in many ways, and it was this tragic death that led the PBR to make protective vests mandatory. A biopic was also released in 1994, eight seconds, and it focused on the life of Lane Frost. Frost lived an incredibly short life, but he is fondly remembered as a fighter and one of the best bull riders to ever live.